Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you're checking in from and welcome to the 88 MPH community call. I'm your host, Whipper, and I'm a crypto enthusiast and an 88 MPH community volunteer. We have an exciting call lined up for everyone today, and it's our pleasure to host Harvest Finance and Complify. A couple of reminders before we get started. When you're on stage, please keep your mic muted unless you're speaking. If you have any questions, Please feel free to raise your hand so we can bring you up on stage. Our open to the public Q&A section will run at the end of the call. And a quick reminder that we will be closing the call with a $100 raffle giveaway to one lucky listener. So please stay tuned to the end. On the agenda today, we have introduction into Harvest, Complify, and 88MPH, generating high yields on your crypto, trading and current market analysis. We're going to talk a little bit about regulation in DeFi and stablecoins. We'll get updated some news, updates, roadmaps, and more. And then we will be followed by our Q&A section towards the end. So please sit back and relax. But before we get started, a moment of silence for all the ETH we just lost due to EIP 1559. With that, I will open this up to Harvest uh, and Poopster. Well, Can you please give us a quick introduction into Harvest, who you are, and what brought you into the crypto space? Um, I'm just chatting with Poopster. I think he's having a few issues uh, bringing his audio on. So whilst he figures that out, maybe start with Red. Yeah, sure. Red, uh, if you want to talk to us a little bit about Complify, who you are, how you got in this space, that'd be amazing. By the way, nobody laughed at my EIP 1559 joke. Oh, I thought it was hilarious. Moment of silence. I didn't know it was supposed to laugh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks, thanks. I'm loving all the ETH that's being burned. It's, uh, it's, been, a, it's been a lovely day. All right, so um, I'm Red, been in the space since about 2017. Um, we're working with a project called uh, Monolith. Um, again, I was like just kind of the first project I discovered in cryptocurrency because I thought, hey, as soon as you can monetize uh, with like a Visa credit card, this actually becomes real money. So it's like, this is a cool project. I showed up in their chat just before the ICO happened. And then I kind of became a moderator just helping other people out. And that started my journey um, in terms of like community building and kind of what I do today, um, working with Complify and just trying to help them set up a, a cool organic community, kind of like 88 um, MPH and Harvest both have, um, trying to set up that same dynamic for um, the protocol that they've launched. Um, as far as Complify and their protocol, it's actually really cool. It speaks to like my degenerate nature of gambling, why it actually um, really attracted me into crypto in the first place. You know, thinking you could build like a casino directly on smart contracts and that could rise up against um, resulate uh, rise up above re uh, regulations um, and then you're using like this global currency like ethereum right um, so if uh, las vegas is making you know 50 billion a year think of what you could do globally with a casino right so that really kind of attracted me and so Complify being a derivatives platform um, where you can do some 5x leverage in DeFi. Um, again, that really spoke to my DGen nature because who doesn't want to make five times more instead of just like one times more, right? Um, <clears throat> but what's scary about derivatives or leverage is, you know, forced liquidations or a margin call, right? So we've, you know, if you've been in crypto long enough, you've probably seen some scandalous things happen, like on BitMEX, where there's only a flash crash on their exchange. Everybody gets liquidated just on their exchange. And then there's also, a, you know, five, 10,000, whatever, $50,000 margin call coming in on top of what you lost uh, because the flash crash was just so sudden, right? And so now these people have lost little Johnny's college fund. And who but with Complify, um, it's really cool because using an AMM, they've actually cut out those negative bits of um, force liquidations and margin calls. Because essentially, um, those things happen on a centralized exchange because you're borrowing on credit um, with these exchanges. Um, and so at some point when you're losing too much, they just have to cut you off. But then again, Again, you have to deal with this volatility of crypto where you can have these wild swings or just, again, something scandalous happening only on one exchange um, completely ruin your life, right? So um, the way that the Complify protocol works is basically like LPs, and this is all using USDC for 5X leverage plays. As an LP, you deposit, say, 10,000 USDC, and the AMM splits that up equally 
to 5,000 long tokens, 5,000 short tokens in whichever pool you're depositing in. So let's say Ethereum, right? So now every token that's been minted or every derivative that's been minted is now fully backed by $1 because again, the AMM split up that $10,000 equally to each side. And so now with collateralization of every derivative available, there's no need to force liquidate you or cut you off due to some kind of like credit call, right? Every position's fully mar uh, collateralized. So what this, what makes this such an awesome opportunity for people um, is one, this is DeFi, it's an AMM. And if you see in the news lately, like Binance been getting a lot of trouble with regulators because derivatives are so risky but so highly traded, one of the most mainly traded things on Wall Street is derivatives. Um, there's a lot of regulations and scrutiny around this. And so Binance is getting its tail kicked with regulators where it's been offering these things. So, you know, this is a, a great example of something that is very needed or wanted by like mainstream traders and even crypto traders um, now in DeFi. Now, cutting out those negative bits of forced liquidations and margin calls by creating a system where these derivatives are fully um, collateralized. And so then <clears throat> what's cool is the, you, you've minted your derivatives as LPs and now traders are coming in and traders can buy, you know, whichever direction they want to go. The risk to the LPs is let's just say the market's bull and everybody starts buying long tokens from the AMM and only long tokens. That would mean the pool is becoming out of balance and therefore holding too many short tokens. But what happens is the algorithms in the AMM are meant to protect the LPs. So as the any imbalance grows in the AMM here, in the case too many longs being sold, the fees charged to traders are actually quadratically growing to the point where we've seen that traders are paying nearly 50% in fees just to get into a swap position like during a bull or um, a bear market, right? Depending on what the volatility is happening. And these are all flowing to the LPs. And then in case, again, this um, imbalance occurs and then the market does move long, the LPs are being protected by these excess fees. What we've seen now in basically two to three, actually three months now of the protocol in operation, LPs in raw USDC returns with no emissions whatsoever are making about 45 to 50% APY um, annualized when you do the fees over these three months. So that's an incredible number just for USDC alone, a stable coin, which generally only pays like 5% on Aave, right? You're now making 10 times that potentially on Comply and it's proof that a protocol can work without reliance on emissions propping it up. There is a, pro, uh, a governance token uh, with Complify. Um, farming is probably going to start in about a week, but they didn't do farming initially as a grab. There was one small phase when we were on Ethereum, then it ported over to Polygon to make it a little bit more uh, cheaper to interact with because the contracts are very complex in this AMM and, and pricing derivatives. Um, but so now it's been running for about two months on Polygon, again, without any emissions, showing that 40 plus percent APY clip in pure USDC. So again, proof positive that DeFi protocols can exist Without these fake emissions, LPs can be profitable um, by providing a, a service on raw USDC returns. And then there's also the service for derivative traders. Again, one of the most highly traded things in the world for mainstream users could now jump over and do something in DeFi, right? Without all of these middlemen. And then again, going back to the whole point of no force liquidations, there's been times in these three months that let's just say the market went uh, short when you were holding a long. And so your long basically dropped down to zero. At that point, that's when like a centralized exchange would just cut you off of the knees and you're out. But on Complify, your just value of your token is just kind of sitting in zero until the two week market cycle ends. But if during that period the market suddenly reverses, you can make your money back to going two plus positive 
So there's actually been times where there's been zero value tokens and they've done a full reversal all the way up to the $2 maximum token. So basically nearly a 20 X. So um, that's basically Complify um, in ELI five. Um, I'll shut up there or shut can up that, now. Can I have a reverse? If I buy one at $2, Reg, can I lose every single bit of my money? Just so I can know if, what, if I know what I'm doing. Yeah. So again, it's like an AMM, and it's it price. There's a there's a nominal value versus the immediate swap value. So the nominal value may say, yeah, you've maxed out your position at two dollars, but because there's still a week left in the market, if you try to sell that token now, it may discount the token at say twenty percent because there's still so much volatility left. Nobody's going to pay maximum value for a token and not have any more uh, room for potential profit. Got it. I was just giving you a hard time, man. That's all. Good, hey, man. Uh, uh, sorry, I was having, uh, sorry, guys, I was having audio issues at the beginning. Um, I think I've yeah, got it all no figured out now. No I'm, worries. I'm no um, Red, that, was, yeah, that was amazing. Um, you really covered quite a bit there, and I'm sure we're going to get back to you because there's just so many interesting things that you just mentioned about uh, your project that you're working with. I'm happy that Poopster uh, got his mic worked out. Can you uh, give us an introduction to Harvest, uh, who you are, how you got in this space, please? Yeah, sure. So, um, right, I'm just, uh, I'm like probably a lot of people here, or maybe not. So, I don't have any technical background. I don't have, I'm 43 years old, first of all, so I'm, I'm like an old person in the space, right? And that's fine. Um, like the people here accept me and um, there hasn't been any issue about my age or any of that stuff, right? So, uh, uh, anyway, that's not too old. I wouldn't say that's old. Well, well, you know, I mean, it's old for the space. Uh, so like at ECC, for example, there's a bunch of people who are maybe half my age, right? So anyway, just to <clears throat> highlight that anybody can come in here and start working basically right so i didn't have i come from i worked in the i was a metal worker for 20 years i think um so i worked in the metalworking industry and um no no kind of technical background no kind of financial background um in 2018 uh, i had come down i don't want to draw this out but i'd i'd gotten this uh i'd come down with a form of leukemia and um so I had to have these treatments and, um, you know, chemotherapy, and then I got a stem cell transplant. Anyway, long story short, right after all that happened, as I'm recovering, you know, and I don't have an immune system, COVID hits. So I'm in a bad spot and I don't know what to do. Well, over the past couple of years, I've been accumulating a little bit of Bitcoin and Ethereum, but I didn't know too much about them. And I thought, well, this is a great time and a great opportunity for me to learn. So, um, you know, this was right around all the time when kind of yield farming was just getting started with uh, comp and uh, yearn finance and things like that. Um, I was I, I had gotten in just prior to that and had started learning. So DeFi was just barely an idea. Um, synthetics and some some of the earlier platforms were around. So I started learning everything I could, um, and I, and I really liked what I was seeing with the uh, direction of what we then what we now call DeFi was headed, right? So back then we didn't even really know what it was. And um, it was really cool to kind of see that, like the community itself come together. And it really, um, I, I, you know, I jumped in and I got very involved and very passionate about it. And, and I had a little bit of a 401k left and I said, well, this is it. You know, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to be a farmer. I'm going to work in DeFi and I'm going to figure this out because I don't have any other options. And this is, uh, looks like a really amazing opportunity. And I love these people, right? I felt like this is my family. So, um, yeah, like I started getting involved with yield farming and, um, that eventually led to like, you know, back then you had to figure all this stuff out yourself. There wasn't any tutorials or, you know, it was like, uh, just jump in and figure it out. So, like even just getting started with MetaMask, as many of you know, is not like a real simple process for somebody who's not um, up to speed with all this stuff. So uh, my, I, th I felt like I, I had gotten some help from a couple people early on that, that um, wanted to help me learn. And that was very, very valuable to me. So I wanted to share that with more people and like just try to onboard more people into the space and like, 
I don't know, man. I, it's hard to explain. I'm sure all of you understand what I'm saying when you feel like this is like our family and you feel passionate about a project and you want to share that passion with other people and like have them feel those same feelings, right? So, and I, I guess it's about um, like onboarding onto DeFi and trying to figure out how to farm. Um, so, how does that kind of like do or harvest, right? So, is, is that kind of what harvest to try to do? Uh, oh, yeah. it, it, in terms of trying to make it easier right so i mean well, okay yeah so getting to back to it yeah that's about it, it when harvest launched it's kind of where i found like my DeFi family right you know because i'd already had some farming experience but i still was kind of um it, it was still all kind of i was still learning a lot so yeah like getting involved here at harvest was um it was a huge step for me because um, it made it so much easier for me to understand kind of what was going on. And, and there were people there that were willing to help me. So like I said, the reason I got involved there and, and started, you know, they asked me, the team actually basically asked me on the, um, you know, during the first week if I wanted to help be a moderator. And I was like, yeah, sure. You know, of course, because I was already doing that, um, you know, and then so it just kind of grew from there and, and my role has grown. But yeah, I, I feel like, um, you know, our goal is to try and make it like easy for anybody to onboard into DeFi and anybody can be able to, um, to participate in this as well. Like that's what my story illustrates. I'm not, I don't know, you know, I don't come from a background. So, um, yeah, I, I just want people to know that, yeah, w what we're doing at Harvest is, you know, we're a yield aggregator. We, we look for the best opportunities to um, aggregate yield in DeFi and, and bring those in an easy way for, like, our farmers to find all in one place, you know. And, and um, you know, we, uh, of course, uh, it saves, like, time and gas. And um, so, you know, it's, it's, it was very easy for me for somebody who didn't have a ton of time to like monitor every single farm um to just kind of let those that let harvest compound all my interest right and i could focus on learning the other things i needed to get busy learning in DeFi, right so yeah that's that's our basic mission is try to um we want to onboard as many people as we can and like we feel that educational material is very important um so that's what we've been focusing a lot on lately um i know i'm kind of going sideways here jb if you want to reel me back in or if i'm if there's any like no no man that's that's amazing i, I, I just that was one I, of the best, it was one of the best intros i think i've heard in a long time and uh, before <laughs> we get started i just want to publicly say that like i'm sure everyone here hopes that you have a speedy recovery if if you're on you know or you've already recovered and i think that like what you said is is so important like that's what we're here for people are here to you know work together, find their families, their DeFi families, as you put it. And it's funny, like, I almost wish that, like, some regulators might have heard your intro. Here they are trying to push people away from utilizing this technology. And there literally are thousands or hundreds of thousands of people out there who are just trying to make some basic income or, if not, just utilizing these protocols. So I shout out to you. And, and, and that's an amazing introduction. Um, we're going to dig deeper into Harvest um, and Complify. Before we do that, I do see that we are joined for some new people here in in, uh, in our Discord server. I want to just throw it to McFly real quick, just to give a quick intro into 88MPH, and then we're going to get deep into both of these amazing guests that we have with us today. Yeah, thanks, Weaver. Um, so yeah, quick intro regarding what we are doing at 88MPH. Uh, we are offering fixed rate yield uh, for stable coins and crypto. Uh, you deposit some DAI and basically you are earning a fixed interest rate uh, on this, um, plus some uh, incentives. Uh, we have the NPH token um, socializing the protocol revenue and giving you some voting rights. Um, so yeah, you can see 88 MPH as your deposit account where you are like putting your savings and you earn some interest on top of that and it's a fixed right yield. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the overview. Awesome. Uh, guys, before we get deeper, I just want to mention that some of the questions I might ask may seem very obvious to some, but since we are joined by many, by many new people here, I just want to make sure that everyone has a good understanding of each project. Um, so bringing it back to Poopster, maybe you could talk a little bit about how Harvest actually successfully achieves its high yields and its returns. 
that's actually a great question that um, probably would be better fit for somebody else, but I can attempt it. So, um, yeah, right. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, most of what we do is like taking any farming opportunity, any farming opportunity that we can find. And, and in fact, anybody can propose any of these. Um, and we encourage that, like our community members to go out and find opportunities. Um, and, and so what we'll do at that point, point is kind of do like a just kind of like an in-house audit right so we kind of feel like um if a project gets the harvest stamp you know it, it kind of means something right because we've gone over those contracts and we feel like they're safe um you know and, and we also need to keep in mind that um all of DeFi is still learning you know and so we're still there's exploits every day so um i think that safety is like one of our number one concerns right um and these these uh these multi-million dollar exploits are something that's probably going to continue so it's it's um we pride ourselves on being able to you know um go over all these contracts you know we, we ourselves have several audits um but yeah we, we for the most part you know we just want to save people time and money we feel like um we want to make it easy for somebody who can come, come in and deposit some eth or some USDC um, just to get started and try it out, right? And um, so they're going to earn a little bit of their yield back into the primary, and then they'll have a chance to earn some I farm as well, which is um, our um, compounding farm token. So if you deposit farm into the profit share pool, it's uh, you get I farm. It's a receipt, and it's just a compounding farm token, right? Yeah. Um, switching it over to red. Um, so users who deposit USDC into Complify, um, do they make yield on their crypto as it's sitting within the AMM acting as collateral? And if so, like how, how is that yield generated if it is generated? Oh yeah. So if we're, we're talking about an LP, so if you want to provide liquidity to the derivatives market, um, you're depositing USDC into the market you'd select. So like Ethereum, like I was mentioning before, you deposit USDC into there and it mints the derivatives. So then when traders come and actually want to pick, you know, a 5X position long or short, just like you're buying a token on Uniswap and you're paying a tiny fee, these derivative traders are paying a fee to the, the liquidity providers. So it's the same idea as Uniswap or you know any other DEX um, where you're providing liquidity and you're you're collecting some fees in return. The biggest difference here is you're not collecting you know like a Uni token or um, you know a BNT token or whatever it is, right? You're collecting pure USDC returns. I love it. I love the concept. Speaking of which, though, like that you mentioned, like a five X long position, can users choose? how much leverage they want to use, or is that like a standard 5X across the board? Yeah, right now is the protocol is brand new. We're kind of just keeping the options limited and rolling out more and more options, right? So we only started out with four different derivatives. Um, and now I believe there's uh, six or eight different derivatives that we have on there. And then we're actually going to roll out options trading, um, which is another form of derivative. Um, but as things kind of get a little bit more complex, there may be these like exotic type derivatives forming where you're you're kind of taking like a bucket of like 3x ETH, 5x BTC, you know, 2x Aave or whatever, and you could have these weird splits. Um, so yeah, it's not like Binance right now where you could have a slider that goes from one to 100x. Um, right now everything's kind of fixed at 5x, but hopefully here in the future as we roll out more items, um, that'll definitely be an option. Amazing. And coming back to yield, um, Poopster, I'm curious to get your take on uh, whether or not Harvest has plans to introduce sort of like an institutional version of Harv Harvest similar to like Comp or Ave. So, yeah, uh, I'm not completely sure if like these are things that I can talk about at this. But, well, yeah, of course. Yeah, that's what we want to do. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> I can't talk about how far into, <laughs> I can't talk about how far in development no, sure. stuff like that is. But right. yeah, for sure. Like, I mean, of course, we'd love to do uh, that. That would be a, a huge goal for us, right, is to 
kind of um, maybe be the back end of a CFI operation, right? So, like, the possibilities are, are limitless, really, with what we can do. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. That'd be. Um, oh, I think that would be definitely something we can we can move. Right. To. And what's what's your sort of take on uh, Coinbase's move into fixed yields? Um, I know they're offering four percent on USDC. Obviously, that's nothing in comparison to uh, what you can make on Complifies and LP. But like, what's what's your take on that? Um, how do you think this is just sort of like? You know, to get people in, do you think this is something that could be long term sustained? What's your thoughts on that, guys? I'll, I'll go ahead and then I guess Red can say I, I feel like it's just gonna the competition is gonna increase, so it's gonna start with Coinbase's four percent, then it's gonna move to you know whoever's the next one. JP Morgan's trying to get by. I, I think that this is the way that we're actually going to see adoption, right? So, and, and I actually think this is going to spur growth into the fact of um i feel like like i said i i, I can see a lot of institutions um using a lot of DeFi smart contracts on the back end but um presenting a, a cfi front end for it i'll let red speak to that though yeah i mean it's just kind of like the internet right it's it's, it's a good analogy for this space that you know it kind of started slow with a bunch of nerds creating million dollar websites and you know mark cuban got rich on all that and you know there's all these famous stories um but it started from like this kind of grassroots um thing and then ultimately institutions recognize like the power of email um and this these forms of the digital transference of data and so that's when it really caught on right and i almost think that's kind of like where the where the phase at in crypto is we're we're trying to prove that this is a viable technology um you know and i think again like complify and even harvest is showing that like yield farming or these returns are sustainable because there's always going to be projects that are you know bootstrapping through fair launches um or offering their tokens because they need to get liquidity providers or they need to get these governance tokens into people's hands so you know whether yield farming or providing lp positions and derivatives or uniswap or whatever there are these mechanisms that are that are proving out to say like hey mainstream there is tangible stuff here. It's not just a bunch of rug pulls and JPEGs. Um, there are cool protocols that can mimic the traditional finance stuff in the digital world. Red, could you walk us through a typical use case, not use case, but just can you walk us through like a trader pops up, he wants to go long, um, you know, ETH or whatever. What what sort of is happening? So you mentioned that like he would come in with, let's just say 10,000 bucks he automatically deposits, I guess, or are the LPs different from the speculators? I'm trying to understand how the process Yeah, LPs works. are different from speculators, right? Like it's just, again, just think Uniswap. You're, as an LP, you're not there to trade necessarily. You're there just to provide liquidity and provide a service so people can trade between these two different things. Same thing at, at uh, Complify. You're depositing USDC to create these derivative pools so then people then can, can trade back and forth from those pools. Yeah, can I jump in real, just like real quick is as like um, uh, to give a different point of view from uh, a community, like I'm a user of Complify, right? So um, I stick um, a lot of my spare USDC that I want to farm with um, and, and just use it to, uh, to provide liquidity. And like uh, Redemption is saying, you know, it, all, it's done, all it does is it takes it and mints it into an option that these guys can trade between. I don't need to understand all that to know that I'm getting, you know, 35 to 45% um, APY, which is fine for me. But I've also started to expand a little bit and learn about like what they're doing. And um, like, it's an easy way for dumb people like me to kind of uh, utilize these options, right? So just for instance, I, I hold a, a ton of Matic, right? Um, and I love Polygon Network. So I'm long on that. But I, it, with the recent like volatility in the market, I need some downside protection. So it's really easy for me to buy like you know a thousand dollars worth of Matic five X down, and that's got me covered for quite a bit of liability, right? And so that way it kind of allows me. It's a cheap way for that allows me to play both sides of the market if I want to. I guess is, a, is the way I would put it. 
Yeah, he's dropping some fire alpha right there. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of different strategies you can take. I mean, so back to your like kind of original question. Yeah, there's the LPs. You're just providing liquidity for the market. You're there to collect trading fees. The the front end of the protocol, which is what everybody you know derivative traders want to use, is where you're going to take your five x position if you want to play the market, right? And so um, there's you know BTC, Matic, ETH, Comp, Ave, you know a bunch of different markets that you can come in and say, okay, yeah, I want I want to take a position. I think Ave is going to go long, and it's as simple as here's my USDC swap for um, you know Ave. 5x long um you know what you need to know is that those markets last two weeks right so let's say like day one um you know matic started at one dollar right so it's saying okay here's the basis of the price and if matic moves 20 percent up to like a dollar 20 right times five that's a hundred percent right so that position would max out with 20 percent movement either way and so, you know, throughout that two week cycle, you may, you're going to, the derivatives start pricing out differently, right? So they start it again, equal parts. So if I deposited $2 as an LP, you would mint one, two different, you would mint the token, $1 each side, $1 long, $1 short, right? And so if the market starts going long, it starts picking away from the dollar short. So now a dollar 20 in a long would mean the short is only worth 80 cents, right? And so that's how the AMM works and keeps itself in balance. So in theory, there's also different ways you can jump in the market because if let's say ETH has been going bull for a week and now the short tokens have been you know, picked away at a value to only 40 cents left remaining, but you think the market's going to reverse here because it's just kind of been going a little bit too strong or there's a bunch of options going to expire on Binance or blah, 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 whatever it is, your magic tea leaves thinks the market's going to drop. You can go buy those tokens for 50 cents or 40 cents and now suddenly have a 6x on your hands if the market were to suddenly have like a huge swing. So there's different ways that you can kind of play um, Complify, but... The simple answer is you have some USDC, kind of like a lotto ticket. I think the market's going to go long. I think it's going to go short. I'm going to throw a hundred bucks at it. And you're basically swapped into a derivative. And now you're gambling on that 5X position. It's really just a couple clicks from USDC to your whatever you want to pick. Red, is the AMM set up sort of like a balancer style AMM? I'm trying to. I'm, I'm wondering. So, when you first pop in as an LP and you're putting your USDC, you mentioned something about you're you're minting equal portions of these long and short tokens, right? But where does that USDC actually go? Are you still with us? Oh, sorry. Yep, sorry. My mic was breaking up there. Um, so yeah, they're basically a liquidity pool like there is um, at any AMM. But the swapping process is a little different. And I'm, I don't want to get too complex here. But when you actually swap as a trader, you're also minting equal parts at that same time. So let's say you're going to take a long position for $5,000. You're still minting 2,500 long, 2,500 short to the AMM. But then it's swapping out those shorts that you minted for equal parts long. So now you have the full long position that you have. And then it just drops those remaining collateralized shorts into the liquidity pool. So again, that may have gotten a little bit complex. But ultimately, those USDC are sitting there in the AMM waiting until the settlement date of the two weeks. The market finalizes, and then you can basically trade in your derivatives for exactly what they're worth. Cool, cool, awesome. And I'm assuming that everything is happening on L1, right? It's all on Polygon right now because these contracts, they're super complex and the price and the derivatives, every single block, um, basically to prevent any arbitrage. The, the system is like self-maintaining. So it reprices on, um, again, every three second block. So it's on Polygon because when it was on Ethereum, it would literally cost $200 to conduct a swap um, just because the contracts were so complex. 
What L2s on Ethereum are you guys looking at right now, if any? Right now it's just Polygon. We're trying to get the system deployed. We need to get the governance tokens in the hands of the people before we can consider expanding. Right. Awesome. Um, maybe let's switch gears a little bit here and talk uh, about regulation, which has been a super, super hot topic. Um, so I'm curious to get your take. I know that there was some news this week with regards to DYDX's airdrop and a lot of U.S. based uh, users of the project were super, super pissed because they were sort of left out. I'm wondering if you guys see um, what what sort of issues you guys see with the uncertainty around U.S. regulations and how that would impact uh, both projects like Harvest and Complify. Sure. So I can speak to that. Like, honestly, um, well, like with Harvest, so our devs are anonymous. We don't know. We've never met them. We don't know who they are. Um, like the, those of us that are representing the project are just basically community members. So um, to be honest with you, I don't think there's been a whole lot of concern from our side. We'll, you know, we'll do what, what we feel like is necessary to, uh, to comply with um, what's going on in DeFi. But I mean, uh, as far as regulations, no. I mean, I hope from a personal standpoint, I hope they get some stuff in place. I think that it, it, there needs to be some clarity around some of this stuff. And, and a lot of us want to pay our taxes, right? So, um, for instance, like at Harvest, we're working with, uh, we've spoken with a company um, called Opolis, right? Which is what they're doing is uh, onboarding, like taking DeFi companies like us and making us legit, you know, giving us a payroll, allowing us to pay our um, to pay the people who work for us and, and get healthcare and things like that. So yeah, we're, we're seeking out options that can, that, that, that can help, you know, is going to help our farmers or our, and, or our team members, um, because we know it's coming, right? Uh, so we do want to be prepared for it. All right. What about you? I guess it's probably even more significant when we're talking about Complify because of the fact that there's like derivatives trading and stuff like that. What's your take on the uncertainty with the regulation, um, with regulations in general? Um, well, I think that's why it's important that we're building tools that are truly like DeFi and that can eventually like rise above like this regulatory influence, right? Like you, you have Bitcoin's kind of almost become just, just such a monster of its own. They can't really regulate it away. So they're going to have to regulatory adopt it, right? So I think at some point, like we almost have to like keep building and actually truly making these systems like decentralized. And I think Harvest is doing a really great job of that, um, you know, in terms of their community and really um building out something that's end to end not just dependent on like a couple of you know devs right so i think when you can build kind of like these bulletproof protocols um that you can rise up or rise above these regulations that are holding back like 95 percent of the population right because if you're not quote unquote an accredited investor which is really like two to one percent of the, the population you're not allowed to have access to derivatives unless you go through some broker, right? So, you know, ultimately, I think these tools are extremely important to make sure that everybody has fair access. And then how do we make sure that we're either trying to work with regulators or making sure that our systems are basically out of their reach? Yeah, th th those are really good points. Um, I'm, I'm wondering what you guys think about Uniswap's decision to remove certain ERC-20 tokens from their front end. I mean, obviously they didn't touch the contracts, but what sort of message do you think that Uniswap is trying to send to regulators? And do you see this as being a common practice from other DeFi projects removing certain things from their front end while maybe not necessarily touching the back end contracts? Like, honestly, I think this tells you who's who and what's what and who stands where in the DeFi world when you start seeing stuff like this. So you can draw your own conclusions from it. Personally, I, you know, the reason I joined crypto and DeFi was kind of to highlight the point Red said, you know, like, we're here to be a decentralized community. So, um, yeah, I don't agree with, with them, with the re with what they did. And, and I think it's, uh, you know, but I think it's what they felt they needed to do to address regulators. And, um, 
I can't really put myself in their shoes because I don't know what they're dealing with, to be honest. But uh, yeah, I, I don't like it at all. And personally, I'd rather um, that we we make our our rules here and and kind of police ourselves. Um, so uh, it's just a personal viewpoint, I think. It's almost like um, the timing of the regulations is uh, how to say somewhat conspiratorial because it's like. There's, there's no real talk about any concrete regulations during a dip, and as soon as things start to come, you know, round in a circle and the bull case is back on, this is when you're going to start hearing about the intense, you know, regulations and taxings and all this sort of thing. Um, so I, I do wonder how much of it is for the betterment of the people, and maybe more just a defence for the banks or the financial system as it is, if you know what I mean. Ed, what about you? What are your thoughts on the removal of those certain ERC-20 tokens from Uniswap? Do, do you think that this might be a, a theme that we might start to see within the DeFi ecosystem? You know, so here's the thing. Like, if, if crypto, there's going to be this core of, like, decentralized, hardcore products, like, again, rises above all regulation, uh, you know, whatever. Nobody can touch us, blah, 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 blah. But, like, to really get mainstream into this like that means you're going to have to have centralized like institutions coming in here right and they're going to be doing institutional type stuff um so yes while i understand everybody wants like uniswap to be the mighty DeFi thing or like everybody wants to be like every project to be a white knight like you're never gonna solve you know your aunt matilda Miss King losing all her money into the oblivion because she mistyped an OX address until you probably have some kind of centralized kind of layer that helps, you know, uh, resolve those kind of issues, right? And, and that's just like one random thing that's I'm type coming up with my head. But again, just like the, the internet analogy, for the internet to really have taken off and become what it, it is today, it's because huge sums of money flowed into it, helped strengthen and build up the in infrastructure. And again, you still have like this quote unquote decentralized nature of information with the internet, and there's still a bunch of freedoms, even though centralization has its tentacles all wrapped around it. And I probably envision like the same thing for like DeFi is like you're going to have this ability to do whatever you want and build truly DeFi protocols while there's other going to be centralized um, things that are out there that probably make the experience more easily um, ingestible by the user. Red, do you guys see the possibility of like 10x or 20x on Complify? Yeah, like um, people have talked about that and it's really whatever that the user wants, right? Like right now, like we're we're like kind of in this proving stage so we don't want to do anything crazy right but like i, th I think it is pretty amazing in the sense that like again 40 percent raw returns no emissions on pure stable coins that's an amazing return right like i don't think you can beat that pretty much anywhere without some other like money legos tricks playing in there right like again the ave only gives you like five percent on your usdc so um i think one we're, we're proving to everybody because nobody's going to want to like LP into some crazy exotics and and not know what the AMM is doing. But we've had a, like a lot of brilliant people come through and and say they're heavy derivative traders. If you come and look through the conversation on Discord, there's some like really complex conversations going on about like Black Scholes mathematical algorithms that like are way above my head because I'm just a numbskull um, community guy. But um, there are some really smart people that are taking notice of Complify and what it can do. And then, you know, so again, I think that's going to be attractive to mainstream. And these are the kind of products that mainstream wants. So um, do I necessarily want like the evil things that uh, these centralized institutions bring? No, but I realize it's probably inevitable and what the space needs to kind of take its next evolutionary step. I love the idea of 40%. And I think everyone here in the audience, I could like hear them salivating on the idea of like 40%. Can we focus a little bit more on maybe what some of the risks are to some of these LPs? I mean, um, let's talk about that. Let's focus a little bit on it. Sure. I mean, I posted a little blurb um, in your in the general chat that kind of explains it a little bit. Um, but basically the risk exposures, I've, like I was explained before, you know, as an LP you deposit 
and you're in balance, right? You deposit 10,000, there's 5,000 on each side, so you're in balance. So if the market goes long, it doesn't matter because you're holding long tokens and it's negated by the short, right? But as soon as people b start buying too much from the AMM, right, on one side, that means the AMM is left holding the opposite side. So if everybody's buying into the bull market, the AMM is the one stuck holding short tokens. And those are the tokens that are losing value as the long tokens continue to go up if the market moves in that direction. But what protects the LPs again are quadratic fees, not exp exponential, but quadratic, which is you know increasingly ever more so. And uh, we, there's some graphs posted in our documents that show the difference. But again, you're seeing traders taking you know 50% trading fees to jump in these positions and those fees flow to the lps right so um you go and look at the pools and there's like six to eight pools in there you know one of the pools we we actually recommend everybody if you're going to lp because fees are so cheap on polygons like two cents to deposit even if you only have a thousand dollars just put 250 dollars into each pool or whatever it breaks down to and hedge equally across all pools as an LP because some perform wildly different than others. The APY we show is a net aggregate across all pools that we offer, right? So yeah, BTC may be down uh, like 1% because maybe there was too much exposure in the shorts and the market was going long. But otherwise, may people didn't make the same decision for the other pools and those pools are net up, right? So yeah, there is some risk, um, but again, net overall where there's been a 40 percent gain in raw fees again and no padding there with some kind of fake emission tokens to wipe out any like smoke and mirror negative performance yeah i mean i think the same could be said about harvest i mean like you know if you go take a look on their website and you see what the apys are in the different pools it's it's phenomenal um and it's really presenting such an amazing opportunity Poopster, maybe you could just speak. I know you mentioned that security is obviously at the forefront and the top level priority of the project, but maybe you could speak a little bit more about, um, you know, security and, um, you know, what potential risks users have. Obviously, you know, I mean, yeah, maybe you could touch a little bit on that. Sure. So, um, like, as everybody knows, there's inherent risk in DeFi. There's a reason that these APYs are so high, right? I mean, it's not just because anybody can do it, right? So, um with that being said like um we have more than just one person who reviews a contract um you know before we decide to start farming it is actually uh, quite the process so some of these uh, you know that's i think that that's part of the issue like we have a we have a time lock on any changes made um so you know we can't our our devs can't just go in and make immediate changes and drain funds or anything like that. So, uh, but we do want to allow for the, the dev team to have a little bit of like flexibility and, and be able to deploy strategies quickly. So, um, you know, we found a happy medium with the time lock with the community, you know, there've been debates over, um, you know, how long that needs to be. And, and there's been some recent discussion um, on Twitter from Chris Black, I believe as well. Uh, but yeah, so measures like that, time lock, you know, and, and there's been discussions of a multi-sig as well. Um, I think that uh, Harvest has really focused on like decentralizing our community first and taking that approach of like, let's, let's um, look at it from a decentralized community standpoint and we can slowly start to um, decentralize the actual governance part of it. Um, but like as is, we've we've had a lot of success uh, in running with this model so far. So I think that's probably what we'll continue to do. But yeah, you know, um, audits audits are changing now. I, I was speaking with um, Richard Ma, who is the uh, the the founder of uh, QuantStamp at uh, ECC, and he was telling me a lot about what they're doing. And so now audits are almost taking a different focus because of the fact that a lot of the um, quote unquote hacks or exploits we've seen have been, uh, you know, just that like arbitrage and, and like um, exploits of, uh, you know, so anyway, auditors are having to look at this in a different light now. Um, I think it's just a process that, that we're going to learn and grow and um, it will just kind of figure out along the way. But, um, you know, security is ever changing. 
100%. Um, so I'd like to get into like the news updates and roadmap section of the call. I'm just curious what milestones uh, each of the projects have achieved that you would mention or is worthwhile mentioning or, or sharing to the public. Uh, I guess for Complify, I mean, we're relatively new, so our, our list is going to be a little bit shorter. Um, but I ultimately think, um, you know, just being here for three months and again, proving that this is a sustainable protocol, um, that those fees have, have been sustainable over those three months. And again, it's without emissions. Um, we're seeing that people love the fact that obviously you're not going to get forced liquidated. You're not going to be margin called. Um, the fact that, you know, regulations that we've been talking about have been really cracking down on these centralized organizations. And so now that we actually have a tool um, in DeFi um, that everybody wants to use, um, and it's very simple, like I said, oh, five, I have a 500 bucks and I want to YOLO into an ETH up position. Cool. Click, click, click. And now I'm the owner of a, a 5X derivative, right? And it's all DeFi. Simple as making a swap like on Uniswap. Um, again, then jumping over to Polygon, um, just making it extremely inexpensive for users. Options will be rolling out soon where you could like deposit Matic itself and do like a covered short call. Um, I won't get into that, but it's just like a whole nother um, derivative type that, that people love to use. And then, you know, I haven't even mentioned really the governance token, um, which when fully distributed and, and governance activates, um, users or holders of the, the Comfy token will collect protocol fees every time a token or a derivative is minted. So anytime an LP deposits, minting happens. Anytime a swap happens, minting happens. So pretty much anytime anybody interacts with a protocol, there's going to be a, a small fee pushing to those comfy holders. So even as an LP, raw E um, returns, and then as a governance token, you're actually connected into the cash flow as well. Again, not some kind of emissions thing where we're just pumping more tokens at you to kind of stimulate rewards. This is all going to be self-sustainable with USD um, returns for all users, whether you're an LP, trader, or comfy token holder. Awesome. <clears throat> what about you, Poopster? Um, so, yeah, um, I'm, I'm sorry. I am completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> Uh, well, so, okay, yeah, so for, so no, I'm sorry, I just got a lot going on. So with Harvest, right, I can, you know, we can get into, like, all the numbers and, like, 400, we just, I think we just got 400 million and, and, uh, and TVL, right, and we're coming up on our one-year anniversary and we got uh, listed on Coinbase Pro, which was a huge uh, thing. I mean, like, there, there's, all that stuff is great, and, but I think what I really want to highlight is that, um, that our community is, what I feel is like the best community in DeFi, and um, I, I would encourage any and everyone who hasn't visited our Discord to come by, to stop by. Um, we we do something called the Creativity Contest, where I think we give away about thirteen thousand dollars in farm, and we usually do we try to do like one a month. Maybe we haven't done one lately, so there might be one coming up pretty quick here, and that may be some alpha. I don't know, but. Um, yeah, I just want to highlight that anybody can join our community and anybody can get involved and, um, and we want everybody to come and get involved. We need, uh, more people to come and get involved. There was four of us, um, at ETHCC in Paris representing Harvest Finance. And like I said earlier, we, we don't even know our developers, but the, the, the reaction from like the, the, from the other projects were there that were there was just amazing because uh, they couldn't believe that, you know, that there were just people showing up from representing Harvest Finance. You know, we had our own event. Um, so uh, that's what I want to say is that anybody can do this. And, um, and if anybody has any questions about how to get started or if you need help, please DM me, ping me, whatever. I'm more than happy to help anybody get involved and um yeah that's about all i got yeah perfect actually i'm gonna open it up to the audience if anyone has a question for any of these amazing guests that we have please do so uh just go ahead and raise your hand so we can bring you up on stage uh just got a message from redemption he's gonna be five minutes afk but he'll be back uh, no worries no worries um 
while we're waiting for anyone in the audience to ask away uh, with their questions, McFly, I'm going to bring it back to you. Is there anything that you'd like to share with the community uh, with regards to any updates or anything that you're super excited about that's coming down the pipeline? Yep, sure. Um, just before that, um, we met with uh, Poopster Redemption uh, in Paris. Also, there was Josh. Uh, it was great to meet you guys in Paris. And uh, I can confirm that it's really surprising that, not in, in a good way, I mean, that a project that is really community driven is represented at these kind of events and really prove the point that you can build something that is really community driven uh starting to be like decentralized as much as possible uh so yeah it's really i'm really happy to see that uh because uh it's not new but you see more and more project going that way so there is different way of uh driving your project and you don't need to to be with uh, uh any kind of um like pre-team building or it can be like something that is built uh, along the way um, and you don't need like an EVC for doing these kind of things. You don't need to raise four million dollars before starting this kind of project. So that's really cool. Uh, we are in the same vibes at 88 MPH um, and we try our best to copy what Harvest is doing. Um, we are like building on Harvest since uh, December 2020. We have uh, fixed right uh, API uh, using under the hood uh, Harvest. So it's really a great tech um, allowing us to offer the best yield to our users. Uh, we will continue building on, on, on you guys. Um, yeah, really cool. And same for Complify. Just a question for you, Redemption, before before going back to 88MPH. Uh, are you planning to build any structured product or capital guaranteed product uh, on Complify with the, the options or stuff like you're building right now? I think he he's stepped away, away from... Yeah, he's, he's stepped yeah. away from producing. So if you hold oh, okay, that, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, but I still come back that. A scavalier, I think, has a question for Poopster. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, I just had that question. You were saying that uh, you know you can DM me, ping me. As of right now, um, like I go about in various Discord channels. I work on some projects. So I I'm a student right now. But uh, when I think like of my future as of right now, I see that uh, like in in some kind of shadow because this industry is cool. This is great. I like working here. But how do I get recruited? Like uh, as of right now. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much my question. And uh, secondly, one more thing, uh, I found out about uh, Harvest Finance working with NFT20 and your yield farming there. Do you have anything other than that, other than fractional NFTs working with DeFi? Like we have CryptoKitties and all these projects, like these silly NFT projects that are getting so much attention. Uh, that's not bad. That's really great for the ecosystem. But at the end of the day, when you when you buy some kind of uh, NFT for like a thirty eight million dollars or above that kind of money, people think the uh, uh, second selling one NFT would be um, like a security, right? How can we convert mm -hmm. that security thing to some kind of uh, a, a structured income, right? You have this NFT. Uh, there are certain to uh, certain uh, protocols that are working to for play to earn. But sure. uh, uh, projects like uh, CryptoKitties or even some silly NFT projects, how how can we well, like have De DeFi working with them? That's yeah, why. sure, sure, sure. No, that's a great question. So let me throw this out there, and um, this may be like I don't know if I'm supposed to say this or not, but um, so yeah, like uh, NFTs, we haven't fully like embraced them in any sort of way yet. Besides, kind of what you said with our strategies. But we have been working on quite a few things, and in fact, we're talking. We're in talks with um, Cometh Swap right now to um, possibly do some cool um, NFTs there over on Polygon, right? So uh, I don't know if you know much about Cometh Swap, but um, uh, they're they're a, 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 they have an NFT based game, and they're also uh, they also have a, a Dex on Polygon and. Um, so that's like one of the ways that we're starting to try to embrace this kind of nft mania but yeah we're also working on several different things if you want to go ahead and join our disc 
Jordan, uh, Major Boobage. Uh, he's kind of our resident NFT uh, moderator who's working on those type of things. And yeah, we're, we're happy to help like, we want the community to get involved and like help us design these like ideas, anything that y'all can come up with for sure. We're all about like instituting those type of things. So please feel free to come by and share any thoughts or ideas that you want with us. And um, yeah, we're open to exploring that, but um, just to be uh, perfectly honest, no, we don't have like anything solid set in stone that we're doing right now, but we are working on a lot of things around a lot of uh, ideas around nfts and like i said um hopefully working on a partnership with uh come swap that'll help uh maybe we can get some like harvest tractor uh spaceships or something awesome man i just wanted to uh answer your first question escavalier about how do you get work in the space um i would say that i've spoken with poopster about this uh, myself personally i think your best bet for that is to find a project that you really like, that you can kind of resonate with and get to know the community, spend some time around there and you know make yourself useful. Develop a skill that you think is good for a project, be it marketing, coding, you know, just being a general good community person, anything like that. And then translators. Just translators, there's so many things you can do, you know. So many. Um, and once you're there, then you can reach out to some of the team members. It doesn't have to be the lead dev, it can be a community member, or whatever and you know most DeFi projects are always looking to grow their teams with mm -hmm. people who are dedicated like pretty much all of them so if you find a thing you like and kind of make yourself useful then i think it's 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 actually not so difficult yeah yeah and there's, so and there's, i'll tell you oh sorry okay. i'm back by, no, no, by the way but i was go. gonna say in my experience and also like helping projects on board like people or build their communities i've never i don't think brought somebody on who specifically said like oh i'm looking for like a paycheck or i want to be a moderator or whatever it is it's it's always been you know somebody's kind of shown up and the they've doers. already like yeah they're, they're being helpful like by nature right like when i showed up to any of the projects that i work for like i just started naturally like answering questions as somebody asked somebody i responded if i knew the answer and then it's just kind of like oh i really like this project so i'm hanging out here and i'm and i'm oh maybe i'll write an article about it because that's my thing or maybe i'll draw create a stupid nft or you know whatever it is whatever your skill set is um you know that's how you find like you know a good like position within an organization because then ultimately that's your resume right as opposed to a bunch of dms that i get are scams or whatever else in between um i rather see the people and help the people that are kind of already willing there to do it as a volunteer as opposed to somebody saying like oh i want to do this as a job right you get more passion out of a person who's kind of doing it there as a volunteer first than somebody who's collecting a paycheck yeah that's a, that's a great point so like if you are looking for work in the industry I, that that would be like josh said that would be my number one suggestion is I would start with passion uh, projects that I'm passionate about because you already have a certain level of engagement and you're invested there. So for me, like that's just how it started. Like when Harvest launched day one, it was just the team. They didn't have moderators and, and everybody that there that is there now. And we've grown to, I don't know how many members now, but I would say probably 20 plus like team members. So um, yeah. And it just all came from like, finding the people in discord who are helpful and and honestly that's where um almost anybody that we bring on board today comes from it's just uh people that we meet in our discord servers so uh, i would uh it'd be i'm in a hundred plus discord servers and it's hard to manage but um this is where like 90 percent of our business is done so Awesome. I hope everyone's enjoying the conversation as much as we are. A reminder that uh, we are open to the public for questions, so feel free to raise your hand so we can bring you up on stage. In the meantime, um, we can continue the conversation. It's funny that you guys mention this. The, the guys at Bankless talk about it all the time. Uh, they talk about how so many of these projects have massive, massive amounts of money in their either treasury, their debt funds uh, to hire people. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there on Discord and Telegram that are eager to, to work, to create blogs, videos, you name it. And I feel like that's what makes our industry so unique. 
that there's all these people that are so passionate about what they're what they're doing here and even to the point where they're willing to volunteer their time you know and it's like it's not even about the money so um, yeah yeah it, it's amazing and, and just to kind of uh I'll go ahead and throw some ideas out there for anybody who is looking for, you know, for work or, or who wants to get involved. Um, Cause I'm involved with several projects. I, I don't just work at harvest. I actually work at, um, I work for, you know, not, uh, I guess you would say as a, a paycheck or whatever, but uh, I'm involved with several different projects, including uh, uh, UMA protocol, Badger, um, Geyser, Snow Swap, uh, Chi Dow. Uh, we all need help at all. Uh, uh, yell, yam. We need help at all of these different. Uh, we're all looking for help. So, um, like literally, um, if you want to jump in and get involved, uh, y you can just go to the Discord and, and get involved. Like Red said, and just um, see what see what they need. You know, because there's there's uh, and I try to tweet it out anytime I see job openings. But there's just so many. You know, there's so many. So anybody can do this. Literally. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, uh, sorry. Please, please go ahead with your question. Oh, no. I was going to say, speaking about jobs, uh, a project that I am working with right now, we're also looking for people, too. So I'm just uh, shamelessly just say, if there's any back-end devs out there that are looking for a job, feel free to message me. Shoot your shot, bro. <laughs> Yeah, um, if you don't mind, I could post a link uh, in one of the discussion rooms. Yeah, go and chuck it in the general room. Um, McFly, would you like to ask Redemption your question that you, you, he, was, he wasn't there for? Yeah, sure. Um, just wondering, uh, Red, if you are planning with Complify to build some uh, structured product. Um, I heard that you are building this kind of call options. Uh, it's really interesting to build structured product with kind of uh, uh, yeah primitive. So yeah, wondering what's your plan with that after? Are you there? Right? That's great. That's awesome. As an APY vision, that's uh, I'm an I'm an APY holder. I love it. I love what y'all are doing. That's awesome. <laughs> cool to see. Okay. I think he might have stepped away from his computer again, guys. Um, I think we should get that question answered, though, for sure. So if yeah. it doesn't happen this call, then we can post it into uh, the general chat afterwards in text. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe before closing the call, guys, um, just a quick update regarding what happened uh, currently at 8010PH. Um, before doing the, the raffle. Is it okay for you, uh, Weeper? Yeah, for sure, absolutely, go for it. Yeah, so last week, I wasn't in the community call with you guys, but uh, we launched the dual farming on SushiSwap for our uh, MPH ETH pair. Uh, so if you missed that, uh, you can currently on Sushi, Sushi Token plus MPH Token by providing liquidity uh, and staking your SLP on the 2x farm on sushi swamp uh, so that's a great news for us building the liquidity for the, the community uh, we got some internal discussion also to bring a proposal to um, yeah bring back the incentives on uniswap also at some point uh, so we will see that uh, probably after v3 uh, we are just focusing on launching v3 so talking about that it's the last week uh, with our friends at uh, Trade of Bits. Uh, we will have the last meeting with them uh, this Friday, so tomorrow. Um, after that, uh, it will be probably some days that we will work on the, the fix for the issue they will raise for this last week. Uh, and the good news, I suppose, after that, we are ready to launch 8810PHD3 on uh, mainnet. So that's really exciting for us. Um, so yeah, we are eager to, to get to that point. Um, and, um, yeah, regarding 88 mp 3 also, the good news, uh, we will have directly a UI, a user interface that, uh, allow everyone to merge, attach to their deposit, uh, creative contents. So 
maybe you don't know that, but currently in 88MPH, when you deposit some money, some funds, we are representing your deposit plus the interest rate promised to you as an NFT, a ERC721. So that means with the 88MPH V3, that we will be able to personalize, customize the metadata of this, uh, this NFT. You will be able to customize the title, description, whatever metadata you can imagine. And of course, you can attach media, images, uh, GIF, lip, video loops, this kind of stuff. So uh, really excited to, to release that. Uh, it's experimental features, of course. It was available on V2, but only the governance uh, treasury wallet was able to sign uh, the change in the metadata of the NFT. So it wasn't permissionless for everyone. So right now we are bringing that on V3 permissionless with a nice UI. And uh, I want to thank also uh, Owen from um, OX Monster, OX Mon. I don't know if you heard about this NFT project, but uh, he did a cool stuff on ZK Sync uh, last week, I think. Uh, he released ZK NFT dot, y, dot X Y Z, um, and we copy pasted his uh, front end uh, to customize the metadata of the NFT on ZK Sync. We did exactly the same thing uh, with the help of Zephram, uh, and uh, yeah, we put a fancy UI on that. Uh, so it will be ready on Rinkeby this week. Uh, we will deploy that on Rinkeby, on the V3 on Rinkeby. So you will be able to test all of that. Uh, yeah, pretty exciting also for, for that. And we are inviting, currently we are discussing with different uh, artists and their community uh, to, to invite them to yeah, create bridge between creative content and DeFi product. So yeah, mixing both world. Um, so yeah. And uh, yeah, the last news this week, yesterday we launched one MPH on Ichi. So uh, it's our own stable coin, uh, pretty amazing. That was like in one day that was close to 900, I think it's 900,000 uh, one MPH created. So one MPH equal, uh one dollar roughly usd um and from there we will try to integrate deeper and deeper this one mph into 88 mph so currently the first use case will be just to uh use it for type cc on discord so typing tipping someone uh, but after that it will be yeah trying to create use cases uh, with a lending protocol uh, on cream on rari capital to list it there and then after we'll be able to offer a uh, fixed rate yield uh, on one mph so yeah we will try to create more an ecosystem on this one mph thing so yeah i think that's it for the news guys that's awesome so as everyone can see there's a lot of super super exciting stuff happening at 88 mph i want to thank everyone for coming out today before we get into the raffle just Big shout out to Harvest and Complify. Go check them out. Uh, obviously, it seemed like there was a lot of alpha leaks being dropped today, so take advantage. This is where you hear it here at 88MPH. I invite everyone in the audience to our general text channel um, where you can go ahead now and guess between, uh, you're going to guess a number between 1 and 50, and the person that nails it or gets closest to will win a $100 worth of uh, either 88 MPH or is it 1 MPH? Are we doing that yet with the, t the CC tip bot or? Oh, not, not yet. I okay. asked yesterday to be listed. Uh, so okay. it will be already probably before the end of this week, but right. not yet. Okay, cool. Um, Josh, if you can drop me a number within our own private group and uh, help me look out for the winner, that'd be amazing. Oh, guys, I should mention, only put your number in once. Okay, we'll be closing off the raffle shortly. I do see our winner. Okay, so congratulations to, hey, my name is Tim. You are the lucky winner. The number was 40. All right, everyone. Did I miss the pull up? Uh, it wasn't a pull up actually, so oh. we can create. Wait, we can yeah, create. yeah, we should. Uh, we should. Uh, can we, we just, wait? wait. Yeah, can we like hold on? I'll screenshot this. Screenshot. Let's do that. Let's screenshot the audience. 
to do that. Myself. Or wait, may, wait. How can we? Uh, can we? Can we just have everybody react to a statement? Can we post something in uh, somewhere and have everybody who's here react to it? Maybe. Uh, yeah. Okay. Why not? So, go to. Let's go put something. To, yeah. So, put mm -hmm. if you want uh, the just type in there if you want the code react to this message. Anybody who's listening. We're gonna uh, we're gonna retroactively create a PO app, and uh, JB87 is going to post in the general chat uh, a message. And if you all react to that, we'll make sure everybody gets one. Yeah, lots of people mm -hmm. reacting. Cool. Yeah, amazing guys. Uh, between Josh, uh, we we were discussing that before. I I think uh, integrating Ooh, yeah. directly the bolt uh, on on Discord, right? Yeah. I think it'd be great. Everybody's, I think it'd be an awesome move. And um, yeah, really cool. Yep. 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 And congratulations, Tim, on your twins. Lovely to hear that. Yeah, totally. That's amazing, okay. guys. I want to thank everyone for coming out. Thank you guys for joining us. It's been an amazing call. We learned so much. Don't forget to check back with us next week, same time here at the Convention Center. Much appreciated. Wish everyone a wonderful day. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing that ETH burn. <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming, guys. Really appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Cheers, it's been awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it.